Hi, welcome to this episode of ComSpeak on Founder India. We have a very interesting guest who will talk to us about his professional journey. Aman Dal. Aman Dal is one of India's youngest corporate communication leaders who runs communications for a new unicorn, a startup that has been in Gurgaon for a while called PolicyBazaar.com Group. Welcome Aman and thanks for joining us on ComSpeak. Thank you Amit for inviting me over. Great. So in the next few minutes together, we'll chat about your professional journey that inspire our viewers to take ideas to make their journey as interesting as yours has been. So tell us about how you got into communications. I know you began your life as a journalist. Tell us more about that. How did journalism happen? And then we'll talk about how you moved to corporate communications. So I think for that, I think uh, I need to go back into my childhood. Please do. So basically, I was always a sports person. So uh, I got into sports at a young age of 7, 8. And uh, sports is something which I loved. Like I would be playing 8 hours a day, you know, for like 10 years I was playing relentlessly 8 hours a day. When did you study then? Did you even... I was... So basically, obviously, you know, I used to go to school. Right. But most of my time was spent in cricket ground or playing table tennis. Right. So table tennis is one sport which I picked up early in my childhood. And uh, which meant that, you know, most of the time I spent outside my schooling was playing table tennis. There wasn't a day till I turned 17, till I finished my class 12th, where I would not, wouldn't have played table tennis. So, uh, basically, you know, when I actually did my undergrad, I wanted to become a sports journalist. Right. And that's how journalism happened to me. So, what did you do to prepare yourself to become a journalist and a sports journalist beyond playing table tennis and cricket? So I would say, you know, I was fascinated, you know, so basically, you know, like any other youngster, I wasn't sure what I needed to do in my career. So after, you know, I think my second year, I was very confused, you know, what do I want to do in life? And then obviously, you know, uh, because sports didn't seem like a lucrative career, uh, I felt maybe, you know, something related to sports, where I can actually con contribute to the sports ecosystem. Right. So I felt journalism is the best thing to do. So I started looking up to, you know, reading newspapers, you know, how can you become a journalist, started writing a lot, contributing to the magazine and doing some different stuff. So I started preparing myself by again, you know, writing lots of stories. And how did my the job magazine. in Times Group come about? How did you get this Times of India ET, the Economic Times job? So Tell basically, uh, after 2004, I joined Pioneer Media School, uh, where I started my journalism. But again, you know, I was from that time only, I was contributing articles for a paper called the Campus Paper. This was run by a chap called Ajay Jain, who is now a very famous travel blogger. Right, Kunzum. Yes, right. exactly. So he ran a paper for uh, youth at that given time. So I would write for that paper and uh, that actually prepared me really well for, you know, getting that job in Times Group in the sense I had lots of bylines by the time I finished my uh, journalism course. So I was the first one to be hired, you know, first one to get that job from right. Pioneer Media School. So I was pretty lucky. Right. And then tell us more about how your job evolved. You spent about five years in journalism, working in the group across various roles. So tell us how that job evolved and then what led to you moving out of journalism? I think it was fantastic five and a half, six years. So I wanted to become a sports journalist. I ended, be ended up becoming a financial journalist. Right. So I started actually my career started with I covering politics, even like I so I covered BJP to begin my career with, right. which I never wanted to do. This was but the then back in the opposition after ruling running the government for a few years, right? Yeah. So this was back in two thousand five. Right. Yeah. So I actually started with a paper called Vijay Times. Right. Vijay Times was later acquired by the Times Group, right. and when they were rebranding the same to Bangalore Mirror, I was given an opportunity to move out. Right. And then luckily uh, TK Arun hired me and uh, I actually moved into the Sunday team right. with Shubham Mukherjee who is okay. now with Bain. Absolutely. So uh, again during those five years I got to write on multiple subjects. So what was the one unique thing you covered or the most memorable moment of your journalism career in those five years? So I, know, I know you covered the Commonwealth Games as yes. well and that was something I'm sure you loved because of the sporting yes. passion you have. I think uh, if I have to pick up that one reporting assignment, it has to be Siachen. So I went to Siachen, which I don't think you can go as a civilian. Okay. So I think uh, maybe in terms of the story, 
it might not be the best of my stories, but in terms of that experience, I think that was the best of my experience. Wow. So what happened then? Why did journalism, the career in journalism end? Tell us more about that and you moved out of journalism. I know you did a program in, in sports management yes. uh, overseas. So Tell us about that and how... See, again, like, like any other youngster, you know, I, I wasn't sure, is this what I want to do in life? Right. And, uh, and I actually entered journalism because of sports. I wanted to do sports journalism. Somehow I just couldn't get that beat. <laughs> I did everything else but sports. So I thought, you know, okay, I have a chance, you know, I've saved some money. Let me actually now go and pursue my dreams, you know, maybe pursue a course in this field and do something related to sports. So I went to Loughborough, which is one of the finest institutions in the world. And I was lucky enough to be selected there. In the UK. In the UK. Yeah. And I, I, was, I went during that year when, you know, next year London Games were being organized. So it was a fantastic break for me. 2011 and 12. The downturn had just happened and there was a little recession happening in the world. So weren't you afraid that, hey, the jobs are few, I've quit my job to do this, how will I start again, get another job or start my own? Didn't that fear bother you? See, I think uh, coming from a small town, you know, you have nothing to lose. You know, when you have seen everything from that corner where, you know, every little thing is precious, there's nothing to lose. I don't think I've ever had my any doubts you know, whether I'll get a job or whether I'll have enough money to survive. That fear was never there. So, so since you mentioned small town and I know you're from Moradabad, tell us about your growing up years. How was life in Moradabad, where you went to school, about your family. Tell us some more about that as well before we come back to talking of your second stint of work, which is as an entrepreneur. Fabulous city, uh, you know, lovely memories for me uh, coming from that town. Uh, my schooling, uh, lots of friends, uh, because of sports, I think somewhere I will say I didn't have a very normal childhood because most of the time I spent playing rather than, you know, maybe going to tuitions or going out, eating out with my friends. But uh, that is what I wanted to do. I was a high energy child. We'll come back to you returning back to India after you're doing your one year master's program yeah. in sports management. And then what happened? How did you get into work again? I think you started your own venture yes. in sports management. Tell us more about that. So when I came back, uh, so obviously, you know, you have a very different mindset when you have gone to the UK. Right. Uh, there again, you know, I worked on some good projects. And luckily, I got to work with England Hockey, London Games, one project I did. Uh, coming back, I was in a very different zone. Obviously, it takes time for you to settle back to, you know, right. the culture of the country, you know, and uh, how things are, you know, what stage sports uh, sector was there sure. then. Um, so I met lots of people in the industry. Somehow the wavelengths didn't match. Somehow the vibes didn't come. So I decided uh, along. So basically there was another chap with me. So we were two Indians in that course uh, and we felt both the same. So we said, why not, let's start something of our own, you know, and uh, that's where the idea seeded. And what was it called, your venture? It was called Pro for Sports Solutions. So basically the idea was high performance coaching setup, basically for uh, young sports people. Uh, in India, at that given time, there were no high performance coaching academies. So when you talk about high performance coaching academies, while there was a lot of focus on technical bits, but there was no focus on, you know, there was no video analysis happening. Right. There was no nutrition advice being given. There was no mental conditioning happening. Right. So it was a high performance program, which actually had all these things. Uh, but it was far ahead of its time. Obviously the pricing and all of those things uh, didn't work out exactly the way we wanted. But luckily, you know, we got a break uh, with the NGO called Gram Vikas in Odessa. So uh, that's where, you know, we got our first client. And uh, me and uh, my partner, we moved to Odessa for a couple of years to set up that. And a lot of our inspiration came from this uh, trust called Rural Development Trust okay. in Anantpur, which is actually the second largest district in the country in Andhra Pradesh. And they are doing some fantastic work in the sport development area. Of, I still feel, you know, they're not much talked about, right. but their work is phenomenal. And uh, that became an inspiration for us to replicate the same model in Gram Vikas. 
with Gram Vikas. So we worked with their four schools and around 1,000, 1,500 kids. So we divided into, you know, we, what we did was 1,000 kids, youth development, couple of kids for sporting excellence. Right. So basically, Behrampur, where we were stationed, was a weightlifting nursery. Mm. So a lot of these Olympians were coming from Behrampur. Yeah. So uh, we decided to, you know, get these youth trained in uh, weightlifting. And uh, in three years' time, we had lots of success stories come. And then what happened? Why did you move out of running this venture to get back into a full-time job? What led to that? So basically, personal decisions. I was married also at that given time. Plus, somewhere conflicts came into the picture. There were some more projects coming in. I had different views. My partner had different views. Somewhere we felt that, you know, uh, it was not matching. So we decided to part ways. Right. So you did journalism, you studied, you did your own venture in sports management. Yeah. How did this corporate communication job come your way? See, the thing is like, you know, I could have gone back to journalism. Um, but then I was like, you know, I know journalism. I need to move ahead in my career. And uh, see, natural transition is a corporate communications job, a content related right. job. And I didn't know ABC of corporate communications, obviously. But I knew storytelling in the sense and what I could figure out, what I could make out with my conversation from a lot of people. Um, also because I was a journalist, I interacted with a lot of comms people right. before as well as a lot of CEOs. So uh, it was more about storytelling. It was more about building those powerful sure. narratives. So I felt, you know, let me, let me give it a shot. Let me see, you know. And then obviously uh, when I started talking to some people in the industry, there were a couple of offers. And uh, luckily, I chose Policy Bazaar and the rest is history. So in a short span of about five plus years, I think you joined in 2014. Yes. You really built a formidable team in Policy Bazaar. You all win awards, you all are seen, heard at various forums. And yes, I mean, the Policy Bazaar name is now almost a catchword, at least in urban areas, people who know what BFSI offers in terms of opportunities to buy insurance policies and all that. So what were the things you did differently compared to what you have seen others doing from 2014 onwards to build the reputation of policybazaar.com as a place to go to to buy insurance? See, uh, obviously I wasn't someone who studied communications or right. So basically what I saw, uh, what other brands were doing or what other players in the industry was doing was simply, you know, one thing I felt people were lacking was consistency in their communications. And, uh, you know, again, like, I think consistency was missing, simple, you know, in the sense, what we wanted to do was create awareness around protection products, right. uh, life and health insurance. So people in India still feel, you know, life insurance, they buy actually investment right. under the garb of life insurance. Right. And health insurance was hardly sold because agents were not selling that. There were low commissions in that. So uh, the whole focus was around creating those narratives right. which become powerful for people to buy these products which are very important for security of a household. You know, these are actually covers which help with social right. security. So the narratives become, became that, you know, be it any campaigns. Obviously, right. we use the humor route to, uh, you know, on television to hook the consumer to come to us. Obviously. You know, there are lots of ads which have an emotional connect. Right. But humor is something which is very important to engage with this in this very mm -hmm. serious category. So all our narratives moved around ensuring that people compare before buying. And uh, that is something we continue to do. Right. And you won't even realize it. It's so much ingrained in our content that people don't even realize it, that they are actually writing it all the time without right. even realizing it. Right. How large is your team of communicators in the group? At the group level, we have around now 25 people. Wow. Uh, it's all in-house. Right. Uh, you don't work with a PR firm externally at all. So you've built a PR firm inside the company itself in a way. So for me, the KRA was to build it in-house. Right. And, and uh, my intention was not that. Right. <laughs> but then it happened. So they gave me a challenge and I said, OK, let me try. Let me give it a shot. And uh, I was ably held by these people who became my team. Again, the good thing is Policy Bazaar, like we have discussed in the past, is a unique organization which doesn't have too many or doesn't have a single competitor. 
right? So how do you benchmark yourself? Where do you benchmark yourself? Like if I work with a company which made cars, I would say, okay, I want to have more share of voice or my communication should be better than the other car company. So how do you do that at Policy Bazaar? Because there are very few businesses, organizations that don't have a single one competitor and yours is one of those. So how does that work then? I think there are competitors if you want to look at it okay. in the sense there are always competitors. I think the biggest competition is you yourself. Right. How do you ensure that you don't get complacent? Right. In the sense it's very easy to get complacent. There's no competitor. But again, you know, you are benchmarking yourself against a lot of consumer internet companies, you know, the whole insurance ecosystem. How can you improve? How can you improve the ecosystem? Hmm. How can you build that trust in the ecosystem right. to come up with these products? Because the ecosystem at times felt that these products wouldn't be profitable. Right. So you have to build that trust. So when you joined the group five years ago, how many employees were there in the group? I think we were around uh, 700 people. Then, and it's now grown to almost 10,000. 10,000 plus. You, you've built a team of 25 people. What are the attitudes you look for? What are the attributes you look for beyond skills in your team? I think team hunger is very important. I've seen multiple cases where, you know, talent would be there and maybe even the right attitude. Right. But hunger, if the hunger is not there, I don't think you'll be ever able to get the best out of this person. So there are a lot of young people who are either confused about getting into a career in communications and public relations or aren't confused but are not sure as to what they should prepare themselves with to do well in a career in public relations and corporate communications. What's your advice for these youngsters in their late teens, early 20s, looking to build a career in public relations? Read a lot. Uh, Read what? So, every, anything they like, uh, anything that gives them interest. Uh, they should read a lot. Secondly, uh, listen a lot. Uh, I feel this generation doesn't listen a lot. And that's very, very important. Great. I mean, that's, that's something I, I run a school of PR in Mumbai. That's the advice we give our students almost day in and day out. That read and read a lot and we tell them what to read and write a lot and then listen as well. So read, write and listen I think are three ingredients for young budding corporate communicators as well. You, you, you're very young, you're not even 40 and you run com communications for a large group, a unicorn at that, for the 25 member team. Uh, how often do you get questioned for being young by people you deal with saying, hey, aren't you too young? Do, do you face a problem or you don't? You manage to get away with that. I don't think it matters in the sense, at times do people say, but then does it matter? In the sense, uh, I don't think age matters. You think it See, the thing okay. is like a 50 year old can be, can have thinking like a 20 year old and a 20 year old can have a thinking like a 40 year old. Before the rapid fire, what is the one thing you've learned from your current boss? I mean, if there's, there are a lot of things you learn. What is the one thing you've learned that you said, wow, I didn't do this, I didn't know this before I joined this company and that is something that holds you in good stead from time to time. See, so yeah, people management uh, and being fearless. You know, at times, we might be doing the right thing, right things, but it is like, um, irrespective of that, we will always have some kind of a fear in our mind, you know, whether we are right or wrong. Right. So if you know you are right, you know, do it. You don't have to ask. True. Uh, you don't have to tell. So do it. What you, what you know is right. So we'll do this quick rapid fire and then if you have something else to add, we will listen to you. But if not, so 10 questions coming your way. Which is the brand you trust the most beyond the ones you've worked for? One brand you trust the most? I think Vistara. Of really? late. Yeah. Okay. Which is your favorite book of all time? Alchemist. The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho. Which is the best organization you've worked for so far? Times of India. Really? The best boss you ever had? My CEO. The current one? I don't want to say that. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Maybe the one at home. No. Could be anyone. <laughs> An Indian communicator you admire? Uh, Amit Prabhu. Really? Who's that? Describe Aman Dal in three words. Energetic, Im ambitious dreamer. Energetic, ambitious dreamer. Wow. What, what's your favorite social network or social media and why? So basically I do use uh, social media uh, but I'm not very proactive on all these channels. Which is your favorite one? The I one you go to? The one, the first one you press every morning? I think LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Yeah. Okay. Comms or communications campaign that you wish you had worked on, but said, wow, I wish. I think maybe uh, the whole fiasco after the Neera Radia thing happened. So who, who's, 
who would have been your client there? Would have been Nilarajan. I would have I would have loved to be in Vaishnavi then and manage that crisis. Okay, but you missed working there. Do you ever think of yourself working in a PR firm as a leader in the future? If an opportunity why arises, not? why not? Be. Cool. Thanks so much, Aman. I think it was a great chat and it was great knowing you more than I already do. And I'm sure the viewers also would benefit from this exchange of ideas for sure. Thank you for watching this episode of Com Speak. I'm sure you learned a lot about Aman Dal, this young fiery communications leader based in Gurgaon. I'm sure you'll tune in again to watch the next episode in the near future. Thank you.